can't have us back here and giving the details on this. We had a polymer company that was going to sell eventually a polymer for a few bucks a pound. But it was different than anything else had. We had a great patent position. We had samples made for us. And some people said, well, you've got to sell it for a few bucks a pound. The company, and I'll give Ted credit, said, no, people will pay us $100 a pound to get to see this new pump. GE would have never tried to do that. We sold thousands of pounds at a hundred bucks a pound because it was unique enough. People would buy a few pounds, maybe even 50 pounds, because they'd spend a hundred bucks a pound testing it. I was talking to a company last week. They had a new product. They said, our competition costs 10 bucks. We have to sell this close to 10 bucks. I said, if you have to be cost competitive to sell a new product to the beginning, you don't have a chance. If there aren't people willing to buy it at, at twice or three or 50 times the price to see a new idea, you don't have a new idea. So that gives you money. It also tells the investors that people think that is new and different. So I think you ought to really think very hard about the price for the first sales. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot to echo there. Um, yeah, seventy-five percent gross margin is an awfully nice thing. Um, Networking, I, I certainly echo that. Um, with our company, before we got first venture money, and we had like 40 people on our shareholder list. That's a lot to manage, and we, I think we all understand that. But, but, but that's how you get started. Um, and despite the fact that, that I pointed out earlier that uh, programs like those that NYSERDA runs are, are very, very useful for startup companies, I don't want to top that as the, as, as the, the single best place to get your startup money. I think we are, uh, we've all seen companies um, that uh, get addicted to this kind of what they, what they would consider to be grant money from SBIRs and so forth. And, uh, and they just keep going and they run out of money and then their only choice they think is to go back for another one. And, and that doesn't get anywhere and it, uh, and it doesn't create value. Um, so uh, even though it's useful and and, and we love to see you all. Uh, it's uh, it's not something to really depend on. And uh, I guess I'll just end that by saying uh, I think of it as a step function. Uh, so you know our first investment is maybe twenty five thousand um, dollars. That was about the right amount of capital we needed to do that first step. Um, it's raised quite a bit more. Uh, and I, I'm always surprised when I see uh, folks with no sales and, and two people raising three million or two million or even a million dollars for their, their first round. Uh, to get all the way to profitability, and uh, I think you know, start smaller inside you where your network can really give you that access to capital, and then if you do well on that, by virtue of exploring your business plan, you will have <coughs> access to the next set of capital. Right. Yeah, I'd like to invite the panelists to look at the question of entrepreneurship and startups from the capital region for a second. If there is one thing. Um, I, I think the most important thing we can do in this region is to celebrate some failure. I think we are extremely conservative uh, in this region. Uh, when we take a look at startups and startup opportunities, I think we're risk averse. I think we look for uh, incremental technical improvements that can, that can maybe make a little bit of money and be derivative. I love what Evan's doing and what, what he said. Um, about uh, about uh, getting some vision out there, but I think the 
companion piece to that is we have to be willing to uh, to try real hard and fail and uh, and when our uh, and when our entrepreneurs come come back you know we, we, we should regard them as having learned something Um, I'll just say uh, the, from the perspective of a, a younger entrepreneur, I think the, the the hardest capital to get, I'll say it again, if you run your function, uh, your startup capital is zero, minus your burn rate, which is some real finite number, means that still is your most expensive capital. Um, it, so I think that the things like the business plan competition that's coming up again, um, being able to, to, to get that first, maybe it's only 5000 or 10000 or $20,000, it's really your high risk capital. Um, and it, it even may be coming before the tech, first technical validation capital. Um, really when you're just, you need money to get on a plane and go see a customer. You know, you, you need money to, uh, to, to go to that first lab. And I think that investing in that seed capital with really very, very low barrier to, to, to sort of almost just give it to anyone who, who can go through the application process would be really helpful. <laughs> uh, let me give you an anecdote. I was talking to some uh, DC people in the uh, Boston area and you know, talking about our company and it's a startup and so on. Where are you going to put it? Well, it's somewhere around Albany. You know, there's this CNSE. It's really a fantastic place. CNSE, what, what's that? They, they've never heard of it. So uh, then, then, sorry. <laughs> we've had this conversation. Uh, so we get them over the hurdle and say, yeah, there's some really great technical resources there. And they say, yeah, but that's not really what we're talking about here. There's, there's, not, a, there's not this corpus of, of entrepreneurs that have all been successful that you know, when you get to a problem, you can go talk to them. Well, it looks like you know, there's, there's some uh, resources here, and I think we're starting to put those things together. This is, this is evidence that it's starting to come together, but what you need is kind of a critical mass of, of entrepreneurs that have been successful and of uh, investors, especially angel investors, investor groups, and so on, that are interested in making things happen in this region. And I think, you know, not too far away, there's this place called Manhattan, where there's a lot of money up here. Over there. So, you know, bringing some of that up into this region would also be helpful. Yeah, I think I'd like to add to that. I mean, uh, we are a company who started out in Massachusetts. Our corporate headquarters are still in Massachusetts. So when we first started telling investors, uh, in fact, our uh, uh, Bill Rowley is sitting in the audience. He is part of Midtown uh, Partners. They are the ones who helped us raise our first round of money. And uh, we try to tell people we're going to go in Albany. So what's in Albany? And so we try to tell them to Albany Nanotech. It got to a point where I had to physically bring people here to show them what this place is all about. And when they came, they said,